Hi, this is Miles Maria, the Soldier of Mary. In this video, I'm going to go through a number of quotations taken from this book, this wonderful book about Sister Lucy. Because Sister Lucy tells us what is needed for the consecration of Russia to work, you know, to, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. I'm going to read a couple of quotations for us because right now on the internet, people are going a bit wild with is Pope Francis's 2022 consecration on March the 25th going to be accepted by heaven? Of course, some people think that the one back in, you know, whenever it was by John Paul II was 84, is, uh, was acceptable and we don't need another consecration because they think, oh yeah, Sister Lucy even said, oh yeah, that one was good enough. Yeah, I know he never mentioned Russia, but you know, it was still good enough. I'm going to look at the letters that Sister Lucy said. I'm going to, that she wrote, uh, in order to explore what is required for the consecration of Russia to be successful. There's a whole lovely section, uh, Consecration of Russia, in this uh, book, which contains all the extracts from all the letters that we have from Sister Lucy, in which she makes reference to the subject of the consecration of Russia. I actually made a video about this just about, well, 20 minutes ago, but I accidentally deleted it. And in that earlier video, I read all of the, the quotations and there's quite a few pages of them um, of quotations but I've decided in this second uh, version of the video by in which happened I think in God's providence I'm just gonna gloss over because actually the, the letters are fairly repetitive and having read over them now nicely I know what's in them much more than I did uh, when I made the video to begin with so the letters can be broken down basically into those to a priest called Father Jose Bernardo Goncalves, who she writes to a number of times through the 30s uh, and then going onwards, but beginning in the 30s. And then also letters to the Pope. And then a couple of letters, a couple of interviews that were published in books on Our Lady of Fatima. So, okay, so here are the main takeaways. First of all, um, first of all, I'll say the thing that is slightly strange in the letter the, the first letter the one in 1930 to Ber father bernardo goncalves sister lucy says that and i'll quote here if i'm not mistaken the good lord promises to end the persecution in russia in russia if the holy father will himself make a solemn act of reparation and consecration of russia to the sacred hearts of jesus and Mary, as well as ordering all the bishops of the Catholic world to do the same. So, and she says she says that in another letter to him, only like a month later, that it's about the consecration will be about stopping the persecution in Russia. You know, I wonder about about that one because, um, you know, in the 1930s, obviously, Russia extended the USSR extended across many. Uh, many catholic populations and so there was a lot of persecution of catholics in russia and obviously that was maybe that was maybe maybe it's saying yeah it's going to stop the persecution in russia because russia is going to be converted obviously the persecution in russia will stop because russia is going to be converted outright maybe that's the best way of reading that rather unusual turn of phrases maybe father jose goncalves has said to her oh there's a lot of persecution in russia these days and she said yeah well that's going to stop when russia is consecrated again it mentions the um the importance of all the bishops of the catholic world ordering ordering all the bishops of the catholic world to do the same it's interesting ordering we might have to come back to that one um, because, uh, and again, the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, she mentions the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary consecrating them both. And also an act of reparation as well as consecration, you know, those things, there's no mention of reparation in Pope Francis's act that's coming up. And there's no mention of the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, but you know, sister Lucy seems to be in this first letter kind of adding something it seems like she's kind of adding something um maybe she's saying say heart of jesus and mary because because obviously it's 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 through mary to jesus and so in consecrating something to the immaculate heart of mary you thereby bring a greater 
presence, a greater honor to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So it's kind of the two are, are fairly inseparable. In fact, in fact, our, our Lord said that the reason he wanted the Immaculate Heart of Mary, he wanted Russia to be converted as only as a result of the consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary was so that everyone would realize how how glorious the Immaculate Heart is and put it next to the Sacred Heart in devotion. It's the fact that such a small thing accomplishes the, the conversion of Russia um, that, that will give such honor and glory to the Immaculate Heart of Mary so that the whole world, Protestants, Muslims, Hindus, Jews, atheists, freethinkers, will have to acknowledge uh, the sovereign um, maternal motherhood of Our Lady and, and honor her Immaculate Heart as, uh, as the instrument of, of bringing Christ into the world through that wonderful fiat that flowed through the Immaculate Heart. Okay, let's get back to the, the, the topic. And so Sister Lucy writes to the Pope, Pope Pius XII. We have her letter or extracts of it in this book, in which she reminds the Holy Father of the message of 1917, July the 13th, 1917, where we have that amazing prophecy about, um, I shall come to ask for the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart, saying that um, if it doesn't happen, um, the Russia will spread her errors, many nations will be annihilated, but in the end, Russia will be converted. The Holy Father will consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and the period of peace will be given to the world. And so then we, she tells the Holy Father again about the apparition in 1929, which is the moment, as Our Lady said, I shall come to ask for the consecration of Russia, where it happens in 1929. That she does come to ask and when she does come to ask she says our lady tells her the moment has arrived in which god asks the holy father to make in union with all the bishops of the world the consecration of russia to my immaculate heart promising to save it by this means and she says that you know I've kept writing to you about this. I've tried to tell. Our Lord keeps nagging me about this, that this needs to be done. Um, and she says, if you would consecrate the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary with a special mention of Russia, our Lord promises, um, our Lord promises uh, that would fulfill the um, request. Um, and then there would be um, a shortening of a tribulation there'd be the ends of crimes, punishments on the, the world and the church, um, persecution. And she says that many graces have been given to nations simply by them being consecrated to Our Lady's Immaculate Heart. And she says, uh, consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart. Um, so that is in the letter to Pope Pius the Twelfth. Important part of that message is she she tells us that it was in 29 that the bishops of the world was added as a condition that wasn't there in the initial message of 1917 but in the solemn unveiling of the request in 29 that's where the bishop of the world come in so that's a letter to the holy father um let's most of the other texts in this book really clarify one thing is it russia or is it the world? Because it seems like a lot of people thought that the world was enough. You know, the world includes Russia. So if you do the world, you do Russia. And so there's a number of interviews in which Lucia repeats back, no, not the world. In one case, she kind of bangs her hand on the desk, it seems, and says, not the world, no, Russia, Russia. But she does seem satisfied that you can do, yeah, exactly. She says um, in, a, in a discussion, in a letter to a man called, um, interview with this man called Father Jorgen, um, ex which is found in Father John de Marchi's book on the Crusade of Fatima. She says that um, I asked the consecration of the world with a special mention of Russia. The exact request of Our Lady was for Russia not the world was for russia but she was happy to ask for the world with russia um ordering that this be made at the same time and in union with him 
by all the bishops of the Catholic world. So, you know, um, so like I said, most of the rest of this book is about not the world, Russia, Russia. And uh, never did uh, Our Lady ask for the, con the consecration of the world. She only asked for Russia. And uh, if it is not done, the errors of Russia will spread and spread and spread. Okay, so I finished the video, then added a bit more video because I wasn't happy with the conclusion of the video. Here is the section that I added. It runs for the next couple of minutes. Um, in this section, I focus a little bit more on the fact that some of the quotes really mention the fact that the Pope needs to order the bishops and command the bishops to do the consecration in union with him. And the text that we've been given shows the Holy Father really requesting, inviting bishops to do the act in union with him. Sister Lucy says, Our Lady commanded that the Holy Father consecrate Russia to her Immaculate Heart, and that he command all the bishops to do it also in union with him at the same time. So there's the word command. Um, and then, again, every time, every time it mentions about the bishops in union, ordering that this be made at the same time and in union with him by all the bishops in the world. Ordering that this may be made at the same time. That's in the letter to another interview actually with Father Jongen. I mentioned that I think earlier. You know, so asks the bishops and the Holy Father. I mentioned that, but they're both that ask of Our Lady is a, is an order. So it's not like a soft ask to the Holy Father. Uh, a strong ask to the Holy Father, an order to the Holy Father to consecrate Russia, but then only asking that, um, that the bishops do it. You know, it's going to be, this could be the snag, I think, that the Holy Father has certainly asked the bishops of the world to join him. But again, in the letter of Father Goncalves, he must order all the bishops of the Catholic world to do the same. Nowhere does Sister Lucy say invite. Nowhere does she say invite. It's always order or command the bishops of the world to join him in the act of consecration. So, um, you know, I think maybe, maybe, maybe that could end up being the snag for Pope Francis's consecration. He needs... He needs probably, from a really rigorous point of view of the Fatima message, he needs to ask, he needs to command them to all the bishops of the world to join him and not merely invite them. Yeah, that's probably the case. But you know, there will be graces. There will be graces. Maybe we're going to get another partial conversion of Russia. Maybe the war in Ukraine will finish. Maybe there'll be some graces given to the world as a result of this. You know, I'm going to do another video on this topic. Okay, back to the back to what I'm saying. But take my next remarks with a pinch of salt because I'm going to get too optimistic in the forthcoming clip of this video. Uh, you have to remember that I've said here that probably the conditions might not be being met because of this whole ordering slash um, commanding thing. Maybe, maybe it's more, maybe the bishops need more than just an invitation for Our Lady's requests to be granted. But I think since I disagreed with this myself about 10 minutes ago, probably some other, some of you may disagree with this also and might be able to sway me back to the opinion that I'm going to say in about uh, 10 seconds time. Okay, video continue. So in conclusion, from everything that Sister Lucy said publicly, it seems to me that Pope Francis's effort March the 25th, 2022, seems to be completely in accord with the request of Our Lady at Fatima. 
you know, and it's it's going to be it's it's maybe I'll save some of my commentary to another video, but it is strange. But God, you know, I remember Father Gruner when Pope Francis was was um, announced as Pope. Father Gruner was very excited, and he thought Pope Francis would be the one to do the consecration. In fact, it's a it's a fact probably a, a fairly well-known fact that Father Gruner had a, a visionary, uh, quite a respected visionary in Italy, who told him that this was the case, that Francis would be the one to consecrate Russia. And so in spite of the fact that everyone was really frightened when Francis was elected, Gruner wasn't, at least initially, he really stuck to his gun saying, oh, this is a good sign. Yes, he's devoted to Our Lady. He says the rosary. He's going to be the one. Later on, he he seemed to have a change of heart because and because it seemed it seemed so unlikely that Francis would be the one to do this consecration. But you know what? I've been following Fatima for for like um, I don't know twenty years since I was a teenager, and I've always been saying bishops in union with the Pope, mentioning Russia. You know, consecration. It seems like all the all the criteria are being fulfilled. If you want to be really pedantic, I remember one of my friends. You know, back in the day, people would talk about these things, and probably you you probably still do. Some of you uh, crazy Catholics probably do talk about like a, when you're with your friends, you talk to each other hypothetically. What would be required? Some people used to say. Some of my friends used to say that all the bishops had to do it in union with the Pope. And the only, and we were talking about how would you, how would you bring this about? And so one idea was, well, the Pope would excommunicate every, all the bishops who were not willing to do the consecration with him. And some others who were maybe more pessimistic about the state of the world said, well, it will happen when there's only a Pope and maybe two bishops left in the world because all the others have been killed because Russia spreading her errors or whatnot. So... But looking at the texts and just taking them on on like a face value, not giving them an interpretation that's too hard line, too rigorous, it seems like Pope Francis is meeting is meeting those requirements. You know, there was no stuff here about intention. No, no t- stuff in the message about oh, the Holy Father has to have a certain. You know, he must really want Russia to be converted from orthodoxy or he must really hate the errors of russia no it just says that he has to do it anyway this is i wanted this to be a short video mainly on the text of sister lucy so you can all get an idea of what was said about what's necessary in the consecration of russia uh, for it to be successful it seems to me like the one we've got coming up march the 25th it ticks the boxes it's meeting heaven's requirements um, like I said, the whole thing about it's mentioning Ukraine as well, that doesn't seem to be a big deal because although Sister Lucy said, not the world, not the world, just Russia, it still didn't bother her that the world might be mentioned alongside Russia. So, and other people are saying, oh, back then Ukraine was part of Russia. So, you know, it's like you're saying the whole of Russia as it was includes Ukraine also today. I don't know if you need to go down that route because I'm pretty sure there are other countries that were part of Russia then that aren't part of Russia now. And we don't need to mention them in the consecration in order to cover all the territory that Russia occupied back in 1930. Now, that would be a bit funny. So, you know, there we go. I'm really excited for the consecration. And I hope that each one of you will be able to unite uh, with Pope Francis's act of consecration. Maybe go to your cathedral or something. Uh, so you can be united with your bishop as hopefully he joins in with the consecration. May Almighty God bless you, may Our Lady intercede for you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.